Mike 1 on Mike 2. That's you, Kate. Right, here we go. Mike 3, Joel Creasy. Yeah. Come down and spend some time with the guys. This is Kate, Tim and Joel. Oh, oh, hey. Hey. We'll count you in. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Hanging hey, out with friends. Making some radio, man. Yes, yes. Okay, strap him. Oh, we're doing it. We are so doing it. Oh, that is brilliant. <laughs> Wednesday afternoon, it's Kate, Tim and Joel back with you on Tuesday. We are live on Tuesday. But until then, here we are in your ears just celebrating mm. the last little bit of radio, you know? Mm. It's nice to reflect because radio is so disposable, you know? We say something to the microphone and it evaporates. It's fleeting as well. Yeah. That's why I've I've always said to you I love doing the you know the wrap up. But it's not that that's not what we do. The week in review. Week in review. No. <laughs> For eight years yeah. or nine maybe. Week in review. I love getting to Friday, not because it's Friday, of course, yeah, yeah. but because I get to reflect on the show. Yeah, I get real yes. down on Fridays. Do you? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, here's no. Mopey, 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 face. <laughs> Um, the penis plant, one of Kate's favourites. She'll be doing a full Don Burke on that very soon. But up next, <laughs> what's the worst you've seen? What? The worst you've seen? Worst what you've seen? I don't know. Cleaners. Oh, cleaners. Um. What's the worst you've seen? Not call and tell us what the worst <laughs> you've the seen. What's the worst you've seen? Kate, Tim and Joel. Yeah, Wednesday afternoon. This is Nova. We want to speak to you, cleaners. What's the worst thing you've seen. Ronan and his wife Storm, Ronan Keating, they're publicly feuding with a house cleaner Mm -hmm. um, that Ronan's wife Storm says she paid £500, that's $948, uh, to tidy her mansion. Now, the cleaner is claiming that she was misled on what the actual job would be, right? Okay. So, firstly, the cleaner's claiming that they were booked to clean a five-bedroom house. House. Okay. Just a house. Only to arrive and find a mansion, seven bedrooms, eight bathrooms. On my sheet it says seven bedrooms, eight bedrooms and three kitchens. I'm going to say it's wow. seven bedrooms, eight bathrooms. Fifteen bedrooms. I know. Wow. wow. There are always, I've noticed there are always more bathrooms than bedrooms. Yeah, because sure. there always has to be one little extra one, like the powder little room. powder room downstairs. Mm, yeah, but sometimes there's heaps of extras. It's also got three kitchens, their mansion. Wow. Three kitchens or bedrooms? <laughs> Look, I'm honestly just going with the sheet. <laughs> now, the cleaner arrived, said it was chaotic from the, the, the moment they got there. The house was disgusting. And removalists stopped her from being able to clean the house properly. Okay, so she's doing an end of lease clean. Oh, um, right. So Storm, however, has um, branded the job. because So the cleaners have gone to the media, right? Uh, Storm has now fired back and has branded the job a disgrace in a series of fiery text exchanges, which included her sending pictures of an alleged uncleaned toilet and her dirty socks after she walked on the floor. Oh, that's after she's walked on the floor. I get it. Yeah, that's afterwards. So she's popped this up on her Instagram. Um, The public response... Has been mixed, which I'm not surprised. With some agreeing that the cleaning isn't wasn't up to scratch, and other people were uh, totes embarrassed for Storm uh, on behalf because of the mess that they had left in the house in the first place. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. I know. Yes. Wow. So, so uh, let me get this clear: Was Storm and Ronan living in this house, or was this a house they were renting out? And the renters had moved out, and so the cleaners had come in to get it ready oh. for the new renters. I'm getting the vibe. No, they were living in. That they were living. Yeah, in they there. were. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it was their mess. Mm, it was their mess. Their and mess. also, I just think it's probably. Uh, oh yes, Gemma said they were living in it. Okay. It's it's probably a, a, like a, a drama that they've caused that they didn't need to start. Yeah, I know. But also, you're exactly right. Stay out of it. Stay out of it. It's not cool. Like no, regardless, it's not you cool to look like a tit. Uh, you look like a massive tit, and also these cleaners, even if they didn't do a great job, they're just it's a small business probably. Yeah. You know. I know, but they, it seems as though they've gone to the press to go, these people, are, the, the Keatings are disgusting. Yes, the cleaners okay. did go to the press. All right, now, I'm on, I mean? now I'm on the Keating like, side again. I mean, mm. why do people go to the press like that? It's a bit of a lose-lose. Yes. Let just come clean. Oh, good one. Okay, Ginny. Hello. Hello. Uh, what did you say? Hello. What's the worst thing you've seen cleaning someone's house? Okay, so a while back I had my own business and I started off um, doing my cleaning. I won't t- t- tell you where. I was um, commissioned to come to a house mm-hmm. and it took me eight hours to do the, to do the laundry <sighs> because the, the clothes that have been put on the laundry floor over years have become one with the lino. <laughs> oh. And there was about uh, three three to four layers and I had literally thought, what is that? And I went to like like 
you know, wipe it off. Oh, my God. So I basically had to get a chisel and chisel <gasps> off the floor. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh Chiseling God. the clothes off the floor. Wow. Okay, Rita. Um, what did you, you say? What's the worst thing you say? Well, I I worked for a commercial company that um, did a cleaning for an Australian um, worldwide um, uh, uh, store department store okay. where um, we were asked to clean the the toilets and the floors, and I ran into this massive poo stuck <laughs> to the inside rim. Of the toilet, and no one would walk. And honestly, it was, it was as if it was glued there for years. Oh, and tried to get it off. Oh my God. Honestly, I felt like vomiting. No hot water or anything. We had to scrape it off. Oh. And it, honestly, I've never seen anything like that in all my life. I thought it was disgusting, and it really put me off my job. Well, fair fair enough. Enough. It would feel disrespect. It's so disrespectful. I mean, I know mess is mess. And it's part of the job, but it's also like a personal attack. Oh, no, it's not leaving poops in the toilet. Mm. Kate, Tim and Joel. Kate, Tim and Joel, on this Wednesday afternoon, we'll spin up a new game on the Wednesday wheel after five o'clock. But now, Kate's favourite plant. Two guesses. In fact, one guess what it is. Cast your Brown. eyes <laughs> on this plant, guys. Mm. It look. It reminds me a bit of something you might see in Alice in Wonderland or something kind of... Disney esque. Does it? Because it's oh oversized and purple. It's, um, it's a rare, rancid smelling flower <laughs> and it's dubbed the um, Panisi plant. There you go. And it has bloomed Good. for the first time in nearly 25 years in the Netherlands. How oh, beautiful. Um, God, imagine waiting for that. The flower is called... <laughs> what do you mean? 25 years. It's only, it, oh, it hasn't right. flowered in 25 years. How old does that make it? Oh, anyway, so 30? many questions. <laughs> I don't no, know. but what oh, I'm no. saying is when does yeah. it have its first flower? No, no, no. It's all very... <laughs> oh, my God. I love this stuff. Yeah, What's yeah, the yeah. Um, scientific name for it, Kate? It is called the Amorphophallus decasilvae. De- Dick, no. my butt. <laughs> Dick? Dick Silva, that's, that's Silva, Silva <laughs> or whatever. And when the plant is ready to bloom, it gives off a stench like rotting flesh. It attracts flies and other pollinators. I mean, it's just wonderful. Oh a bud God. was spotted in mid-September. Everyone lost their mind, mm-hmm. uh, and within six weeks, it grew to nearly sixty centimeters tall. <laughs> its stem is over two meters high. So it, it stays quiet for a really long time and then, oh, I'm just going to give you a little indication of the fact that I'm going to do something great. Yeah, yeah boom, here I am. Six weeks later, Bang. it shrivels up and work, your face. workers have to slice it open so visitors oh. can see inside. Oh, the language here shrivels up and slices it open. I know. And, oh, here we go. It's believed the species has only ever flowered in Europe for th- three times, most recently in 1997. Oh, it's amazing so, the stories that we um, have heaps of information on <laughs> and then the ones we have little, literally no information on. I love this. <laughs> I wanted to actually be a landscaper or a landscape yeah. designer. Yeah. Still you don't time. need any more information from me, do you? I, I, I hung out um, on Getaway with the guys at um, the Botanic Gardens yeah. many times. They are incredibly interesting. Yeah. Oh. And they have great jobs. Um, Aaron, what's your favourite plant? <laughs> the Rojo Congo um, is something you, I guess you'd see on the bottom of the Amazon floor. Um, and I'm in an apartment and it is absolutely huge, but I protect it over absolutely everything else in my house. Um, it's so good that it just faces the window. So I don't even see the good side of it. I see the back end of it, but oh. it's so good. I don't know whether you've seen a picture of it. But yeah, we've got one yeah, here. Yeah, we're looking yeah, at I've it now. Got a few. Mm, yeah, it's very it's green. green. Do you have a par- it's lanky and suede. Wow. Do you have a partner, Aaron? Yeah, I do. And I don't pre- go near it, though. Oh, wow. And you protect the plant over the partner. Yeah, yeah fair enough. <laughs> and does like it, it flower? No, it doesn't. Well, it hasn't yet, and I've had it for several years What's now, it called again? It's a Rojo Congo. Or a philodendron, I think you call it, the professional name. Oh, the dendron. Mm, The old dendron family. (laughs) It looks like a common (laughs) kind of plant, maybe. I think I've seen them. Yeah, I love how Joel was also trying to angle just to see what team Aaron was on yeah, too. Yeah, you oh, really oh, were no, the old was, partner line. No, yeah, oh, partner oh, then, then just so goes, yeah, he loves the plant too or yeah, she likes it. I know what you're up to. Well, okay, I like mm. mm. <laughs> fellow, <Busted>. fellow plant <laughs> lovers. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> well, should we? I oh, know. Just care for the, ask Aaron off there. <laughs> is, is he on Joel's team or not? Take a number. 
he's on Joel's team. Oh, he's on your team. Uh, he's got good taste. Tim and Joel. After five o'clock, ever been busted? Bitchin', not too far away. Uh, but look, it's almost knockoff time. Let's let's get, you know, let's unwind. Let's de-stress. This is about how to, how to unwind after a stress, stressful day from a guy called Dr. Alan Mendel. Oh, yes. Ha- He's Howie's um, brother? No, no. Oh, I've met Howie Mendel. I bet you don't have a photo of that either. I, do, I don't. <laughs> and wasn't super nice. So. Oh, really? Howie Mendel? Isn't he the host of Price is Right and stuff over there? Uh, oh, no, a, not Price is Right. Um, deal or No Deal or something. He's a judge on one of the Got Talents or X Factors. America's Got Talent. He's the bald guy. Yes. And he, he this is years before COVID. He's a non-handshaker. You know, one of what? those people. You know that one of those people yeah. that just don't shake hands, which is fine now, but yeah. pre-COVID it was a bit weird. Of course it is. Yeah, was he a germaphobe back then? It was a total germaphobe. So he's probably had a rough few years. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, this is not about Howie. It's about Alan. Uh, Dr. Alan, Alan mm-hmm. um, has given an unexpected um, uh, suggestion to getting a good night's sleep, uh, especially at times when you feel particularly stressed out or anxious about things. Um, and his tip has something to do with ice. Have a listen. I'd like you to know that by putting something cold on your upper torso will help activate the vagus nerve. This helps calm you down. So take an ice pack, put it on the chest. This will de-stress your body and send you off to sleep. He doesn't look very relaxing at all, does he? Not at all. And also, activating the vagus nerve seems to <laughs> sounds like it would do the opposite. It would really, like, you'd suddenly have, like, a litre of slushy around your neck and be off to see Cirque du Soleil. I activated the vagus nerve in 2014, and yeah. I'm still hung over from it. <laughs> the vagus nerve. <laughs> <laughs> For showbiz. Uh, oh, my goodness. Dave, David Copperfield and a, a tub of gin and tonic. <sighs> Oh my god! I can't. How does that city exist? Um, it's the the vagus nerve, like the real life vagus nerve, is the longest cranial nerve in the human body. Oh, there is an actual vagus nerve. Where yeah. is it? It's spelled V A G U S. Oh, that's um, how I spell. That's how I spell vagus to my friends. Check out the vagus. Check out vagus. Um, it runs from your brain stem to part of your colon. Oh, wow. I guess so. Right through the right through the bod. Something in between your. Boobs. Yeah, put some ice in there. The vagus nerve is closely linked with the quality of sleep with its functions including balancing the nervous system, Mm -hmm. which I could absolutely do with, by implementing a relaxation response, one of the most important aspects of a good night's sleep. Well, yeah, no crap. Of course you need to relax to go to sleep. How do you you relax and unwind? It's like like I'm I'm, I'm old school, you know, Mm -hmm. just... Yeah. Yeah. Cold one. Cold one, mate. I am phone on flight mode. And like a, like a TV show I've seen a million times. What your phone would be on flight mode for about 8.2 seconds before you'd be desperate to check it again and get, take it off flight mode. I, I think get, the intention's there. That actually would make me... Put My phone being on flight mode makes me more anxious. Nadia, I mean, how do you unwind after a long day? Um, I watch reality TV. I know it's totally tragic. No. Um, maths and mm. Survivor's my... Um, Exciting night. How's Survivor going? I hear it's a very good show. I just haven't gotten around to it. Oh, yeah, it's excellent. It's getting better each season, the Australian Survivor. I really love it. Uh, Thanks, Nadia. I'm Colin. Uh, How do you unwind after a stressful day, mate? Oh, mate, after a 14-hour day at work, I like to grab a six-pack on the way home and uh, get a hot pizza. Yeah, you do. What sort of topping? Hot one, hot one. What yeah, topping? mate, 14 hours is a long day. You need a few beers after 14 hours. Yeah, like yeah. makeup. Dad, can you get a pizza, please? <laughs> Words to live by. Yep. Uh, Marie. You go home when you have dinner, you lay on the couch with a glass of wine, and the best reality show is watching your kids do the dishes after dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Marie. Good on you, Marie. Happy International Women's Day. I normally put um, one of Adele's albums on, generally the new one. Course. Pour myself a glass of Merlot. Yeah, so heavy red. And watch 10 Peach. <laughs> An NCIS marathon. Uh, what do you do? <laughs> oh, just cry in the bathtub yeah, yeah. until it fills. Is Kate, Tim and Joel yes. on Nova. Oh, just after knock-off time on this Wednesday afternoon, it's Kate, Tim and Joel. Mm, do you think you guys would have uh, bought your Easter eggs by now? 
Oh, well, actually, the place, the house I've moved to has a chocolate shop at the end of the street, and I'm not kidding What, like an IGA? No, <laughs> like a chocolate store. I'll, I'll send you a photo. No, on all of that. I believe Like a 7-Eleven. No, it's a chocolate store. Cold it's like called the chocolate yeah. store. No, it's a chocolate store. Paris Farm. No, it's a chocolate store. The Ampole store. Oh. No, it, it's specific. Hags. The foodery. No. Yeah, oh, the you're close. <laughs> I love a foodery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I always go, what they name it that for? It makes no sense. <laughs> no, it's an actual chocolate shop. I'm going to take you a photo and send it to you. Oh, do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah you, 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 you'll be <laughs> busting to see that one. Oh, do it now. Do it now. <laughs> oh, sure. It'd be a change from all the other pictures you send me late at oh, night. Yeah. Oh, no. Sorry. Well, they're a different sort of chocolate <laughs> yeah. store. That's not a Kit, Kit Kat chunky. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my God, and why aren't I in that WhatsApp For many group? reasons. <laughs> <laughs> the emoji game's not far away, but God, I hate bitches. That's next. Ugh. Ever been busted bitching? <laughs> Kate, Tim and Joel. Kate, Tim and Joel on this Wednesday afternoon. It's so awkward if you get busted bitching. Lucky none of us in here bitch about anything. You're, you're busted. Yeah. Out of the three of us, mm. Blackwell is the biggest uh, uh, um, uh, bitchy, uh, bitchy chat. Not true. Of, it, it, uh, anyone listening that either knows you or has an inkling of what you might be like <laughs> knows that you are the biggest bitch of the group. <laughs> Well, that's and, my... and that's surprising because Joel's here. I know. <laughs> it's my brand. And, and typically, you know. Well, that's why we was a no-brainer when we thought, who are we going to get on the show? Joel Tracy's yeah. like, mm, We didn't have, that was our meeting, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I know. It actually was. We need someone to keep Kate in line. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone, I mean, you, you put that like that. You put that out to the world that you're all, you know, slices and dandelions. But I and, am. And then, but then uh, during the songs, <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not. <laughs> Let rip. No, black, that's why I greet black as Every day with hey bitch hey, when I walk into the studio. Awkward when I don't realise there's someone else in there, like one of the bosses. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's happened a few times. Yeah, once. Oh, yeah. Hey, okay, well, once. Okay, the once. bosses don't know where the studios are. <laughs> Or my, what my phone number is. That's <laughs> weird. Most people have that. Mm. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> um, this is about a woman named Shailene Martinez. What a name. Um, Shailene. Shailene. And she was applying for a flight attendant position at Sky West. Oh, that sounds like a reputable airline. airline. Mm. I think they're a low-budget uh, US oh, airline. Oh, oh, you can judge for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Judgy just, McChudgy. <laughs> they're just getting up off their feet. Well, they're not Emirates. Um, wow. And she made a bit of a mistake. Shailene was doing a recorded video interview. Mm. Uh, she didn't realise she'd hit record <laughs> while she was rehearsing one of her answers. <laughs> and she complained about one of the questions. So, the question is, the stupid, cheesiest question I've ever read in my life. All right. What is your impression of Sky West company culture and how does that resonate with you? <laughs> so she's accidentally Aww. recorded that. Mm. Um, a full minute of chatting and applying lipstick later, she realised um, she'd been recorded. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I'm so sorry. I didn't realise it was recording. I was oh. practising. So I was going to say... Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Shailene. Accidentally, did she? Yeah, okay. you'd be shocked to hear she did not get the job. Well, yeah, um, Tara suggested that she thought I'd put someone on hold but didn't and got busted as she heard them talking about her. Oh, no. That happened to me with a restaurant once. I remember calling through for a reservation and they just put the put the phone down oh, and they yes. went, beep, 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 and I listened mm. to the whole thing and then sent a really big email to that restaurant. I know that restaurant. Yeah. Okay. Very nice restaurant in Very Sydney. Very nice restaurant. By the beach. <laughs> oh, no. Well, don't, don't say <laughs> is that. It, is it that it's one, not that though? one. Is it that yeah, one? Yeah, it's that one, but not but that not, one. No, not, not the not one the I go to one. all the time. I remember going. Going to a one. toilet cubicle once upon a time, and I was oh, in yeah. there, and then there were some nasty, nasty girls yeah. who in came cubicle. into the toilet, not with me oh, in the right. cubicle. I was yeah. in there doing a wee or something, and okay. then or um, something. and then they <laughs> no something. doing a wee, and then they came in and they didn't realise that I was in the cubicle, and they're all like, no. "Oh God, did you see that girl out there? You know that one that used to be on Home and Away and was started oh, doing no. that whole thing." And then I opened the door. <gasps> Stared them down. And it was Melissa yeah. George. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, Tim and Joel. Yeah, this is Kate, Tim and Joel. It's Wednesday afternoon. Time for the Wednesday wheel, guys. And Heart emoji, dollar emoji. Eggplant emoji. Let's do this. We're going to do flowers today. Guess the flower. Okay, good luck, Joel. Question good luck, Kate. One. How many? Best of... 
Best of seven, unfortunately. Oh First of four. Oh, God. Okay. Two emojis. I'm going to win today. First you emoji are. is a peace sign. Second emoji is a pair of peace, lips. Peace, Lily. No. Peony. No. Peace. Oh, 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 peace oh, 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 sign lips. Peace, oh, peace, peace sign lips. Peace, 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 peace. No, What's no, the one? What's the one? Peace. 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 No, peace. No. No, peace. Peonies. No, no, I said no. that. What, hey, oh, what, I didn't hey, hear you say that. What are the fingers doing? What number are they two, doing? Two. Two lips. Two, two, lips. two, two, lips. Lips. two, two lips. lips. Oh, no. Two lips. I didn't even know. I know. You said two snow lips. peas and then two lips. But you got it. This is really hard. Oh, my God. I really love this one. Yeah, me too. I love this I love one. I'm not great I love at flowers. flowers. Okay, second one. You're two not great it. at flowers. Your house is full of flowers. Yes, Jack does them. I don't do them. Jack does the flowers. Yes, not all, not the, all of them. The work. <laughs> okay, question number two. Two emojis again. Here we go. First one is a brum brum car, red little car. And the second one is a flag of any kind. Don't get hung up on the country, but it's a flag car, of a country. Flag, flag, car, so don't get hung car, up in car, the country. Car, car, chrysanthemum. No, um, um, a car, car, car. Am I on the right track? With yeah, car? Carnation! Carnation. Oh, yes! Carnation! <laughs> Oh, this is going to be a walkover. I can feel it. I'm trying so hard. Question three. Two emojis again. Two emojis here. First emoji is a uh, like a pot with an egg in it, I guess. A little fryer. Yeah. And the second one is waves. Um, Egg water. Pack. Stop talking it out loud. Oh, sorry, mate. Anyway, that's my pack. process. You can what he wants. Pack, what are you pack. looking out of your teeth? Pan <laughs> water. Banoffee cream pie. Water, pan water. No. Egg. 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 But no, the egg. Pretend the egg's no, not there. Not egg. Pretend the egg's not there. Okay. Um. Fry what? Fry water. Pansies. Pansies. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Pansy. Yeah. Pansy. Yeah. No. Jesus Christ. Oh we finish early today. <laughs> um. Here we go. Question four for the win oh, cake. Oh, oh no. Come on, you can do this. This is three Richie. emojis. Three emojis. The yep. first emoji is a bride, a beautiful bride. Blushing bride. Second emoji Blushing. is a beautiful groom. And the third emoji Wedding. is a, kind of an award of some kind. Wedding uh, um, minimum medal. Wedding uh, white <laughs> boy medal. Wedding. Um, is it wedding? Like, is it that? Is that kind of on the right track? No, no, you can't what, ask questions. Well, what do you do oh at a God, wedding? Oh calm you down. You hear the answer. Marigold. 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 You see, he can ask questions because you hear the answer. You are so. You can't ask questions. Kate, Tim, and Joel. One of our favourite quick draw guests is back tomorrow. If you missed it, Christopher Pine. If you want to relive it, it's Christopher Pine. It's all coming up tomorrow on the show. This is Nova. Let's get out of here, though, with some unusual body parts. And we are talking about the animal kingdom. Hello. I'm David Attenborough. And you'll be disgusted to know what we're about to do, David. Well, I don't know if it's disgusted. I think I think it, it, it's it's educational. And what I saw today on the internet, I mean, look, there are so many things floating around, but I have never quite seen anything <laughs> like this. And at least I can bring it to the table because it, it is, it, like I said, it's about the animal kingdom. But wow, we would you say wow. it uh, took your breath away? It did. You know what? It did take my breath away because wow. the headline, the weirdest undercarriage, and I'm thinking. Well, of course, oh. you clicked on that. <laughs> yeah, were you in the home office when you were looking? Yeah. At I was. Ten o'clock oh. last night. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, okay, well, I'll have a look at that. Of course, you will. Um, the University of Queensland researcher, Dr. Steve Johnston, has co-authored a study on the very strange and unusual undercarriage of the Australian animal, the echidna. Can you read right. your page with it on the ground? But look, but it's behind <laughs> like, the why, computer. Why do you have to do that? this? Why do you have to read like this? <laughs> well, you know what? I'll fold it over then. I put a, I'll some do this. Some Shakespearean play. <laughs> um, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It's because I'm trying to keep my eyes up. Um, okay. I don't know how to deliver this. Can you show us? Do you want to see it now? Flash Let's it get the, the reaction. Okay. Put the long phallus on the screen. Oh, my God. Tree trunk. Is that real? Oh, my God. No, it's not the size that is worrying me. 
It's, it's what, are they, what it how many looks, ends does it have? It looks, like, it looks. Oh, Maddie! Oh my gosh! I mean, it's it, like a little. It's like a it Simpsons looks like, hand. It looks like a little hand. Because it's four I fingers. Don't know. Echidnas it, have that down there. It's like okay. Imagine this. A poor, say your dog's, you've got a tiny little puppy dog and it's your mm. dog's paw, but they've taken the nails out and waxed it. Oh, gosh. Now, is it out always or does it retract? I would imagine that retracts because would, why wouldn't we have seen one before? I mean, yeah. I know echidnas are rare, but when you see them scurrying along, that would be dragging behind the body. That's the length. Yes. Oh, I mean, you know... All bodies are beautiful and all that, but oh my gosh! This a... and if, that, if that echidna rocked up on a grinder little uh, hookup, would you send it on its way, or I'd would you say we need to get to a GP right <laughs> now, mate? Because it's kind of like I mean, we don't really need to go no. into any more detail because I, I just don't know how it kind of works. But the the um, <laughs> the very long phallus makes up a third of a third of the mammal's body. It's bright red. It has four endings. Yes, four which, endings is what's hey, concerning. Hey, oh, this, is, this is about to answer my question. They can all be used for reproduction. All four ends. Oh my God. So I don't know all at the same time, or I don't know what's going on. The study found that the only creator God understands the organ and why it is so bizarrely shaped. Dr. Johnston said the echidna remains a poorly understood species, despite being widespread in Australia. I don't learn much about echidnas apart from the fact that they're spiky. We didn't need to bring religion into it either. But, but, but what he's saying is it's like, well, why, why does it look like this? Only God understands or knows because God is the creator of all. Well, well whoever he or she is, <laughs> yes, that's it. Lisa, um, what's your unusual body part? Cool, thanks. Um, her, her unusual body part is no ears, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Georgie, your unusual body part. You've seen a few. Uh, hi. Yeah, I'm actually a trained zoologist. Oh, yes. Um, and whenever somebody online sends me an unwanted picture of their undercarriage, I actually send them a picture of the echidna penis, <laughs> and it works without fail. <laughs> Kate, Tim and Joel is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.